Hi, everyone. Hello. Thank you for that amazing intro, Yanni. Uh, so as Yanni said, I'm Caddy. I'm a software developer at Expo. And today, we are going to have a bit of a deeper look into development builds. <laughs> Third time's the charm. So as you heard from Charlie earlier in the keynote, from SDK 51 onwards, there's going to be a bit of a change in Expo Go. Expo Go will now only support a single SDK version at a time, the latest one. The main reason we made this change is that it's really hard and time consuming to maintain multiple SDK versions. And it was giving our SDK team a lot of gray hairs. We tried to support these we, we try to support those people who are still on older versions as much as possible. So we built this page, expo.dev slash go, where you can download and install older versions of Expo Go. This works for all but the physical iOS devices, and unfortunately, it's Apple restriction for now. But we have found that nearly all Expo developers eventually need to switch to using development builds which are the preferred workflow for production apps. We've actually been recommending development builds for a while now, and now is a good time to take a deeper look into how they work. So, hi, new, existing, and prospective development build users. This talk is for you. Let's start with the limitations of Expo Go. Why are development builds even necessary? Well, once upon a time, OK, it was 2015 in React Rally. But our CEO, Charlie, gave a talk announcing Exponent, this amazing new React Native development tool that lets you write native apps without any native build tools installed. Does that sound familiar? Well, over time, Exponent got shortened to Expo, and this React Native development tool became Expo Go. Since the very beginning, the vision at Expo, the company, was to bring the experience of native app development more in line with web development. Specifically, we want to improve the build iteration speeds. And Expo Go was the first big shot at this goal. One of the hardest things about native development, especially for developers coming from the web, is actually building and signing this native bundle. You need Xcode, Android Studio, and you need to handle the build signing. So Expo Go removes the need to build your native app for development because it is a published app already that you download from the app and play stores. You then run the JavaScript bundle locally on a local dev server, and you can develop locally without having any native tooling set up. So what's actually inside this Expo Go app? Well, what we get with React Native out of the box is the ability to run React code on the native iOS and Android platforms. Plus a few native primitives, your view, your text, a decent amount to get started. But you usually need a bit more than that if you want to publish your app to production. Video, push notifications, haptics, camera, none of this is included in React Native by default. So this is our little native app box, and we only have React Native installed and nothing else. Say you wanted to render some text. Sure, no worries. It's included in React Native, go right ahead. View, go for it, also included in React Native. What about accessing the phone camera? Nope, I'm afraid you are out of luck. You need to install a package. The native iOS and Android platforms have the ability to access the camera, but it's not actually exposed to the React Native code by default. So we installed the library, and it comes with some JavaScript code and also some native code that actually bridges the native camera capability to your React side. The JavaScript bundle can be rebuilt with ease. The native bundle, yeah, not so much. You need the native build tools to rebuild the app with the new native code included. So how can we let people use the camera in their apps but let them only develop in JavaScript? Any ideas? Well, of course, we need to include the camera library 
in our bundle. So in it goes. And quite a few more libraries. Basically, the whole of what is now the Expo SDK, plus some dev tools and additional community libraries like Reanimated, and we ship it to the stores. And that's pretty much what Expo Go is. It's a native app with a whole bunch of native capabilities and debug tools included by default. So you could develop in JavaScript and only hook into the embedded native libraries as and when needed. So camera is now available. And everything else we might need? No, sadly, not quite. There's a few problems with this approach. Firstly, there's a limit to how many libraries we can include in a bundle. There's always going to be more libraries out there than we have space in our app or in our phones. Also, we need to be, we as Expo, need to be opinionated. It makes little sense to include multiple libraries that do the same thing, so we need to choose one, and that's the only one you can use. We also can't bundle any native libraries that require custom inputs from the user, such as React Native Firebase. And for the libraries we do bundle, you only have one version per SDK. So if a new fix is published in a library, you need to wait for the next release of Expo Go to get it, and there's no real way to patch it. So for these reasons, we don't recommend Expo Go for production, because you should have more control over your development environment. Don't worry, though, Expo Go is absolutely going to stick around because it is still the fastest way to get started. It is great for learning, it's great for prototyping, and there's more than enough there, uh, libraries in there for most use cases, and you can often create a proof of concept just using Expo Go. But ultimately, with Expo Go, you are always inherently limited, and we wanted to fix that. So for quite a while now, the team at Expo has been exploring how to make the React Native Dev experience the best it could be, but without the limitations of Expo Go. We want to keep the convenience of Expo Go as much as possible, so focus primarily on building features in React code, but also remove this major limitation of Expo Go and be able to use any native code, any native libraries. What we want, ultimately, is our own customized version of Expo Go with just the native app libraries that we need in our app. And that is exactly what a development build is. It is a debug build of a React Native app that includes the Expo Dev client. And we use it for development, hence development build. We're very creative. And the Dev client is the library that adds various development tools and is handy for local development. Let's go through a typical use case on a project. So you start by creating a new project with Create Expo app. You see the into your project directory, and you run npx expo start. The default template uses only libraries that are included in Expo Go. So you can install it in Expo Go. Immediately set it up on your phone, simulator, emulator, and get started within minutes on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. You can run it on any device, and you've not had to install any native tooling. So at this point, if you're learning about native development, you're building a prototype, you can keep using Expo Go for as long as it makes sense. But eventually, there will become a time where you need to add something, a library, a capability, that's not in Expo Go. And this is where development builds come in. So how do we convert our project to be a development build? Well, if you recall from a couple slides away, the development build is a build that includes the Expo Dev client. So we need to install it. The next step is to actually build this native app. So we need some native code. This is the structure of a React native project. So you have your source folder for your JavaScript code, and your Android and iOS folders for the native code for each platform. But if you've been developing with Expo Go, your app code base actually looks more like this. So this project is actually also using Expo Router. So we have an app folder for our file system based routing and our components folder, and everything's in JavaScript. No native folders in sight. Well, you can't build a native app without the native code, but you can generate it with CNG. CNG stands for Continuous Native Generation. It's a concept we came up with, and it basically means that we're using the app config and uh, app JSON to generate your native iOS and Android projects. So 
we can use MPX Expert Prebuild, which is the command that actually does CNG. Now, in the past, before CNG and the tooling that goes around it, you would have had to manage these native directories yourself. But now, today, with CNG, the recommended workflow is actually add the iOS and Android directories in your gitignore and never edit them directly. If you've never used CNG before, just imagine how much easier the upgrading React Native experience would be if you don't have to edit any of the native files manually. Now, at this point, you do actually need to build this native app. And one way to do it is, of course, on your local machine. You install Android Studio and Xcode and run the builds. But with Expo, we really wanted it to be a way to do it without building locally, to keep this JavaScript-focused developer experience we enjoyed with Expo Go. And the way to do this is to build in the cloud with EIS. EIS is a cloud service that helps you build, develop, and deploy React Native apps. You can actually use it to build any React Native app. It's just got a deeper integration if you're using Expo. You don't have to use EIS. You can build it locally. You can use a different cloud service, etc. But EIS Cloud Builds do enable you to get around some of the major pain points of React Native development. This here is an EIS JSON file, which we use to configure the various types of builds. The, the builds can be triggered locally via a CLI command. And the, in the default config, you get the dev, preview, and production profiles for the three main types of builds that you need to do. Dev for local development, preview for sharing a built bundle that's installable on devices, and production for the store builds. Using a CI tool for local development might sound a bit unusual at first, but given that in a React Native app, the majority of the development is done in the JavaScript side, it actually makes sense. Let me show you what I mean. This is a video of me triggering a build for my Android app using ESCLI. Since this is the first time I'm ever building this project, the CLI creates a project for me on expert.dev and asks me if I want to create a key store, the thing used to sign Android builds. Yes, please. My local code then gets uploaded to EIS, and the builds get kicked off. I'd like to just draw your attention to the fact that the CLI tool automatically generated the key store for me. In fact, it handles creating, updating, and deleting all the signing credentials for dev, preview, and production for both iOS and Android. This is the same command for an iOS dev build. I've used a screenshot here instead of a video because there's quite a, quite a lot going on. If you've ever had to create or update iOS signing credentials, who's had to done that? Who's then gone to App Center and created a provisioning profile? And yeah, OK. So if any of you have never used EIS to sign your builds, you're going to love this. First, you get prompted to log in with your Apple developer account. Then, because this is a brand new app, I've never built this before, it actually registers the app ID automatically. Then the capabilities get synced. So for example, if you add a push notifications or app, uh, Apple payments, they get synced automatically. Then your distribution certificate and provisioning profile will get fetched or created there. So you will reuse the same distribution certificate if you have one. And finally, for dev builds that you need to run on your device, the CI tool actually allows you to register any new devices via the terminal. And you saw a live demo of this earlier during the keynote. So this was build signing on a brand new iOS build done in minutes instead of hours. Now, when the build is finished, it will print out the QR code in the terminal, or you can view it in expert.dev. Actually, I wanted to draw your attention to this step in the build logs, pre-build, that we talked about earlier. If EIS sees that your app is using pre-build, it actually runs it for you. So even though I showed you earlier how you run pre-build and generate the native directories, you would never actually need to do that if you're building on EIS. Note that the pre-build step is also skipped if your native directories are already um, in your project and not get ignored. So you can use EIS for projects that don't use CNG. The build artifacts are stored in the cloud 
you can install it directly from the website via QR code or with Explore Orbit. QR code is an easy way to install on real devices. Orbit is great for simulators and emulators, or you can also download the build artifact for any other reasons. In fact, because we're building in the cloud, the rest of your team could use the exact same development build too. So you need to build it once. And since I mentioned it, a quick shout out to Expo Orbit. It is the easiest way to launch local simulators, emulators, and open builds from EIS on your local machine. It's a desktop app, and you can see it here on the right. It automatically detects all simulators and emulators I have installed on my Mac. And I can launch them from this menu. And this is a video where you can see me using Expo Orbit to launch a build from EIS and installing it on a local Android emulator. You can even install builds on your physical device via Orbit. So if you plug your phone into your computer, it will show up on the list. It's just really cool, in my opinion. So even when I'm not using it to open a build, I actually use it as my go-to way of launching simulators, because it's really easy to get an overview of exactly what you have installed on your computer and launch the correct one. So if any of this has piqued your interest, you're in luck. Gabriel, the author of Expo Orbit, is going to be giving a talk just after this about how he built it and more of what you can do. Right, let's go back to our development build, the one we installed with Orbit. Like I said, it might seem a bit unusual to do a build for development on CI, but React Native, it makes sense, and it can be really powerful. Because in React Native, most of the development is done via fast refresh in JavaScript, so you keep using the same development build until you need to install another library with native capabilities. And because EAS lets you do this in the cloud, it means you could develop mobile apps without having the native development environment set up at all. So this means you could develop iOS apps on Windows or Linux. Or if you have an existing team or primarily web developers, you can, use, you can have them work on the mobile app. And it really reduces the barrier to entry for anyone in your company to contribute to the mobile app code base. This is your development build. When you first launch a development build, you get this home screen. And similar to Expo Go, the purpose of it is that you choose where to fudge the JavaScript bundle from. We're basically at this stage. We have our native app, and it's just asking you where to get the JavaScript bundle from. So at this point, you're usually already running your dev server locally, so you can fetch developer servers, and it will show up on a list. I usually launch from the terminal. So with the terminal label open, press I to open an iOS and A or Android, or scan the QR code when de developing on a physical device. One more thing that's worth mentioning. You don't have to load the dev server from your local machine. In fact, you don't even need to be on the same network. The, this URL could actually be any web URL. So you could open a dev server from a colleague's machine on the other side of the world which from Poland is New Zealand, apparently. How cool is that? Think about how powerful this is when you're collaborating remotely. Sure, you can screen share, but when you're building apps, things like animations, haptics, and the feel of your app makes a huge difference. So being able to actually preview it on your device while you're pairing is really powerful. Now, once you launch your app, you can still access these dev tools from the dev menu drawer. I'm using the React Conf app as an example here, mostly because it was the last app that I worked on. But it will look the same on any app, such as the AppJS conference app, which is also using development builds and the Expo Dev client. Now, as for the dev tools, we have the usual suspects like the performance monitor and the element inspector. You can toggle these from the dev menu. There is also a JavaScript debugger. You can open the JavaScript debugger either from the dev menu or by pressing J in a terminal while your Metro Bundler is running. It will open the Chrome debug tools where you can easily inspect network traffic. The dev menu is also open to some extensions. You can extend it by adding your own dev menu items, for instance. This can be useful if you need to add some debug triggers that are specific to the app that you're building and launch everything from the same menu. Now, I also need to mention the DevTools plugins. 
This is technically not a feature of development builds because they also work with Expo Go, but I think they're very much part of the developer experience and they deserve a mention here. DevTools plugins are kind of similar to Flipper plugins, but they don't require adding any native config, and they're written in JavaScript and open in an external Chrome browser. Available from SDK 50 and above, we already have some small implementations of plugins from Apollo client, Tanstack query, React Navigation, etc. Our primary focus here was not to build plugins for every occasion, but to make it easy, as easy as possible for anyone in the community to create plugins for your own tools. We have extensive documentation for DevTool plugins in general and how to create them in particular. To create a new plugin, you can use this npx command to create a template, and it will give you everything you need, the web UI, the plugin hook, ready to be published to npm. To open plugins you have configured, you can use Shift-M in the terminal, and the Metro process running, and they will open in a Chrome browser. So for example, this is a quick demo of the most recent community edition, an expert DevTools plugin for Redux. So if you do end up creating a plugin and open source it, please create, raise a PR and add a link to the, to the plugins repo um, to share your plugin with the community. The final thing I wanted to cover is the GitHub integration. You can, of course, trigger the native app builds from a UI instead of a CLI. You can set up Slack integrations when you build completes, etc., and create automatic flow workflows to trigger EAS builds when you merge certain branches. But let me show you how you can leverage GitHub integration plus EAS update, this is the over the air updates, to create a PR preview workflow. If you're using updates, they actually show up in this extensions tab in your dev client. And you can actually launch updates here to check them. To visualize it, imagine the JavaScript bundle is not yet on the phone, but when you select it, it gets downloaded and executed. So using a similar mechanism, we can use EAS, EAS updates to create PR previews for JavaScript-only PRs. Here's an example of it working. We make a change and raise a PR. With the Expo GitHub action, we can configure the update to be created automatically with each build. And the preview link gets added to the PR automatically as soon as it's built. We can then scan the QR code and open on your physical phone directly from the PR, or you can open it in expo.dev and install it via Expo Orbit. So this here was an example of it opening on the local Android emulator. And we can do the same thing for iOS. This makes PR reviews way more palatable and more in live what we already expect on the web. All right, I think this was quite a lot of info, so a quick recap. Don't worry, there won't be a quiz. A development build is a local dev build that includes a dev client. It's basically your own personal version of Expo Go. With CNG, you can generate your native iOS and Android code. With EIS, you can, among many other things, build the native app in the cloud. With Expo Orbit, you can launch builds on simulators, emulators, and physical devices. DevTools plugins are Chrome plugins useful for library-specific debug tools. And the Expo GitHub action integration is useful for triggering builds via UI or creating PR previews. Here are some links for everything I talked about. And thank you very much for your time.